England versus India, five test matches. What a sumptuous summer of cricket in England to look forward to. And previewing this with me is Michael Vaughan. Looking forward to a fabulous series, England versus India in England is always fun. I enjoy going to England. This time I'm not, but uh, I'll be following it out of a studio here. And to use one of Michael's favourite experiments, you bloody gotta love it. Isn't that what you say, Michael, about it? every time the season starts? You know, it's today, Monday, the Wednesday start of a test match. We've suddenly started a trigger that this uh, great test series is about to uh, be upon us. Um, you're absolutely right. When India comes to these shores, uh, there's always a buzz. You know, when Australia come here, there's always a buzz, but very closely, it's uh, it's India next. And, you know, when you're looking at uh, the likes of Virat Kohli and Co and Rishabh Pan, I mean, we've seen a little bit of Rishabh here in the UK. We've seen a lot of him on television. And I know from speaking to a lot of my friends who are diehard cricket fans, test match fans, they can't wait to uh, see Rishabh Pan. They don't want to see a great deal of him, Harsh. They want to see a little, little, little small part of Rishabh. They don't want to see him for too long because they know that He's so good, he could take the game away from England. Yes, he does. We saw that at Sydney, we saw that in Brisbane. And, and Michael would be just a little worried now because post-2018, when India went to England and disappointed big time, India have gone to Australia and beaten Australia twice. And it's, it's not something England do a lot of. So, just, just a bit apprehensive, Michael? Uh, yes, um, I, I'm going to say to you, Harsha, um, I'm going to put India under a huge amount of pressure. If they can't beat this England side, with the team that they have on the back of winning in Australia, as you mentioned twice, on the back of obviously the unfortunate in terms of Ben Stokes missing out, no Chris Wokes, mm. Chris Wokes' record here in the UK is exceptional, no Joffre Archer. If India can't beat this England side on the back of New Zealand winning here just recently, um, they want to go out. Simple as that, Arsha. No, 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 this is not the Michael Vaughan that I know. The Michael Vaughan that I know is going on Twitter and telling Indian fans, and they've never really caught on to the real Michael who I'm very happy to know. He's, he's going to go and, and go and provoke them. But Michael, this is probably the best Indian seam bowling combination that's that's coming out to England. Any of six can go into the test and, and not weaken it very much. And yet the numbers for August and September are telling that are telling us that spinners might play a big part in the two best finger spinners in the world in the last few years are both in the squad. Yeah, and that's why I say, I mean, I'm not just saying it to try and provoke, provoke a reaction. Um, India have got the best balanced team. They've got the spin options. They'll play three quicks, whichever the three quicks that they pick will be high class. Bumra, Shami, Shami, you name it. They've got a high class pack of quick bowlers that you need in the UK. But then you've got Judeza and Ashwin. You know, the problem with Ben Stokes missing out is, you know, England will be lacking either a batter or a bowler, you know, because he offers that that great balance that all-rounders give you. Um, so for that reason, you know, you're looking at an England side that, and we saw that against New Zealand, that they didn't go in with a spinner. Jack Leach had a great uh, winter in Sri Lanka and in India. Uh, he didn't play against New Zealand because England wanted four seam bowlers. Um, they've got to play a spinner, There's absolutely no question about that. But you'll need the balance, you'll need the seamers, you'll need the spinners. England will have good bowlers. You know, Broad and Anderson are up there with the greatest. Um, so for the likes of Rohit Sharma, Agarwal at the top of the order, it won't be easy. It certainly won't because the ball will swing and it will move around. But if you can see off 40 overs and you can still have enough batters in the shed, um, 300, 350, I, I don't think you're looking at 500 pass scores, you know, first innings like we sometimes see uh, on flat wickets, 300, 350 will be a good first inning score and whoever gets those kind of scores will be putting the opposition under a huge amount of pressure. The numbers say that uh, the top seven in England in home situations average 32. But of that 32 average, Ben Stokes averaging 44, so you've probably lost lost your best batsman. What England need is for Joe Root to come out and be the Joe Root that we know. But sometimes under pressure, he tends to be a bit unpredictable. And Michael, as as captain, this this must anger you enormously. That there's some very gifted players. I I, I think Zach Crawley's a fine player. I think Dan Lawrence is a really fine player. And yet they seem to be doing just enough to be in the side rather than banging the door down and saying, right, I'm the next Peterson or even I'm the next Trotter Strauss. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at both batting lineups, um, you know, you look at Pajara, Virat Kohli, Rihani in that middle, you know, they've not had great times of it over the last year or so. Um, I think there's been a bit of action in, in the pitches. I think they've been probably playing on pitches that have not been so flat and so easy to bat on. Um, 
Joe Root since 2018 and England's only averaging 32. There's a lot of runs that someone needs to get, you know, and you're looking at that top three of Crawley, Sibley and Burns, and it's vulnerable. You know, it's a vulnerable top three and Joe Root's been going out there far too soon, 20 for two on a regular basis. Uh, if that happens in this series, you know, I just don't see how England are going to get enough runs. With this Test Match England side, we always kind of hide behind the curtains a little bit when they bat because we're never quite sure. They're very inconsistent <laughs> on, on, on a given week. Uh, if Joe Root gets runs, they'll get a big score. If Joe Root has a, a series where uh, he's not quite at his best, uh, it's going to be very difficult for the England team. England's top five might look a bit iffy, but Joss Butler at six always bats very well when he's at six rather than being out as punishment at seven or as, as England used to do sometimes. And then Sam Aaron, Ollie Robinson, India pretty good at taking top order wickets and not that good at taking lower order wickets, I can tell you. So maybe there's a little opportunity there. But five tests is fantastic, Michael, because what I love about test match cricket, both within a test and within a series, is are the comebacks. We don't see that in T20 cricket, it's a separate jump. But I love the comebacks and there's enough time for comebacks. You always know that the best team wins after five. In a two-match series, you can get a bit fortunate. Three-match series, you can get a bit fortunate. Over the course of five games, the, the best team uh, who, who plays the best cricket will, will win the series. And that's why Test Match Cricket and a five-match series is so spectacular. Um, and that's the vulnerability. If England go in with Sam Curran at seven, you know that's one or two too, too, too high up the order for, for Sam Curran. Um, you're looking at Ollie Robinson, a decent able, really. He'd be a nine in a, in a really good Test match team. Joss Butler is a good six, and, and, and absolutely, he'll be fine there. But you know, England have been playing him at seven, and he's been able to kind of hit hit his way like he does in, in uh, one day cricket um, because of the lack of Ben Stokes. England will look light in one one or other department, so it's not going to be easy from the England team. Um, I, I think they'll have to go with bowling options. They will need. The left guard spinner, India have so many right-handers, uh, they will need that ball spinning away from uh, the outside edge. Michael said something very interesting in his SWAT for England and he said 3-1. Now there's a reason 3-1 has great significance, Michael. Ever since the English left India in 1947, the rule of three ones playing out. India India played in England in 52, 59, 62. England won all of those. India won seven, uh, 52, 59, 67, I think. And India won 71. Then England won 74, 78, 82. India won 86. Then England won 92, 96, 02. And India won 07. Now England won 11, 14, 18. So three one. Three to England, one to India. So maybe that's what it's <laughs> going to be. Well, that's uh, very well remembered, uh, Arsha. Um, I just think this uh, Indian side have got pretty much everything. In, in my view, I mean, it's only my view, um, across the world, um, there are really good teams that can, can win at home quite consistently. There is only one team that I look at at the minute that can win all the way around the world, and that's this Indian side. I think they've got absolutely everything in terms of skill set, uh, leadership, uh, drive, there's not many teams in the history of the game have gone to Australia and won twice on the trot. Um, they have to do it. I mean, I'll, I'll put the pressure on them. You know, Virat Kohli and his team, England's batting lineup on paper. You go Joe Root at four, Josh Butler at six or seven. Um, around that, it, it, it's full of players that you, you wouldn't mind bowling to. Um, that's not being disrespectful, it's just been the way that they've played recently. Um, so I, I will say that 3 1 to India should be a, a, a favourable uh, prediction. Okay, we'll wait and see. Now, we were we were supposed to have a debate. We ended up agreeing on, on most points, Michael and me. But the one thing we agree on is if India don't win in England now, and there's a bit of pressure on, on India, as, as Michael said, having lost in South Africa in 18, lost in England in 18, lost in New Zealand in 20. If India don't beat England now, then when? Thank you very much, Michael. One, Michael, of course, will be with us on Cribbus Chatter every evening. England's Ashes winning captain. He'll want England to win, but we'll wait and see what happens. Thank you very much, Michael. Cheers, Ash.